The China space program is far more advanced than most people realize. According to Elon Musk, China's Heavenly Palace might currently be the most advanced space station ever launched by humanity. And he could be right. While it remains relatively under the radar in much of the Western world, China has been quietly and steadily expanding this remarkable orbital outpost. And just recently, they pulled off a breakthrough that could redefine the future of space exploration. So how exactly did they do it? Back in 2011, the United States decided China wasn't welcome on the International Space Station. This restriction was enacted through a Department of Defense spending bill passed by Congress, which prohibited NASA from using its funds for any bilateral cooperation with China. The stated reason centered on national security concerns and human rights issues, but many suspect that the U.S. could also be worried that China might swipe their ideas or do a little space-age spying. So China said, fine, we'll build our own space station. Now, Obviously, there's a lot more to the story of why China decided to build a space station, but we're not focusing on that right now. What's remarkable is that despite only about two decades separating the launch of the ISS and China Station, the technological difference looks like a leap of a century. China Space Station, Tiangong, which translates to Heavenly Palace, orbits Earth at an altitude between 340 and 450 kilometers, roughly the same range as the ISS. It was developed and launched by the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA, entirely independently. The core module, Tianhe, was launched on April 28, 2021. It was followed by two science modules, Wentian on July 24, 2022, and Mengtian on October 31, 2022. Unlike the ISS, a collaborative effort involving the US, Russia, Europe, Japan, and Canada, Tiangong was constructed by a single nation on an ambitious timeline. The addition of the Wentian and Mengtian modules significantly boosted the station's scientific capabilities. The Tianhe module, the core of China's space station, stretches 16.6 meters long and came equipped with a docking hub that can welcome both Shenzhou crewed spacecraft and Tianzhou cargo ships, like it's hosting a high-tech orbital hotel. Helping with the heavy lifting is a large robotic arm, which was key in positioning the Wentian and Mengtian science modules. It also lends a mechanical hand during astronaut spacewalks. Compared to China's earlier test space labs, Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2, Tianhe is a serious upgrade. It's not just bigger, it's almost three times heavier, weighing in at 22 metric tons. With the full Tiangong station and visiting spacecraft docked, Chinese astronauts now have a surprisingly spacious setup to work, live, and float around in. Tianhe is where the astronauts eat, sleep, and manage life in space. It even features regenerative life support systems. Yes, that includes a urine recycling system. So crews can stay in orbit for extended missions without constantly needing resupply. On top of that, Tianhe also houses the propulsion systems that keep the whole station from gradually drifting earthward. In short, it's the beating heart of China's heavenly palace. So yeah, China already has a pretty slick, fully functioning space station up there. But they're definitely not done yet. According to the China Academy of Space Technology, speaking at the 74th International Astronautical Congress, China has big plans to expand Tiangong in the coming years. Right now, with its three-module setup, the station can support a crew of three for long-term missions, which is solid, but also pretty limiting when it comes to how much science and maintenance they can actually get done. Meanwhile, the demand for experiments is growing fast, and that means more space and more power are becoming critical. The plan is to expand the station to six modules, which would effectively double its internal volume. The first new piece on the blueprint is a multi-docking adapter with six ports, which will attach to the bottom of the current Tianhe core module. It'll be built to mirror how the existing three modules are arranged. So instead of today's T-shape layout, the station will evolve into more of a cross shape, or what some are already calling a double T. This expansion would allow China to send more space science experiment racks, support larger extravehicular experiments, and overall extend the scale of operations aboard Tiangong. Another major upgrade supporting China's space station and its broader space ambitions is the development of a reusable crewed spacecraft. Formerly known as the Next Generation Crewed Spacecraft, the Mengzhou spacecraft is modular in design, capable of carrying up to seven astronauts, and comes in two versions, one for low Earth orbit missions, like trips to Tiangong, and another deep space variant designed specifically for lunar missions. The lunar version is a heavy hitter, weighing up to 26,000 kilograms, and is designed to carry three astronauts to lunar orbit. Once there, it will dock with a separately launched landing system for descent to the moon. 
On June 17, 2025, the China Manned Space Agency carried out a zero-altitude abort test, also known as a pad abort test, using a Mengju test article at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center. The purpose of the test was to verify the spacecraft's crew safety systems in case something goes wrong during the initial stages of a Mengju CZ-10 launch. According to CMSA, the test was a complete success. Looking ahead, CMSA also plans to conduct an in-flight crew module escape test later in 2025, simulating an emergency situation during maximum dynamic pressure, one of the most intense moments of any rocket launch. As a relatively new addition to space infrastructure, the Chinese space station, Tiangong, is expected to remain operational for at least 10 to 15 years. This long-term commitment reflects China's strategic vision for sustained space exploration and development. Tiangong is set to play a pivotal role as a platform for scientific research and a launch pad for future missions including potential ventures to the moon and deeper into space. Meanwhile, aboard the International Space Station, new arrivals are being welcomed once again. NASA's Crew-11 mission successfully docked with the ISS at 2.26 a.m. EDT on Saturday, just under 15 hours after launching atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Florida's space coast. The crew traveled aboard the Crew Dragon capsule Endeavour, which has now completed its sixth mission, making it SpaceX's most flown crew capsule. The hatches between between the two spacecraft are expected to open around 4.45 a.m. EDT with a welcome ceremony scheduled about an hour later. Notably, the docking occurred exactly five years after the return of Demo-2, SpaceX's first ever crewed mission, which also used the Endeavour capsule to carry NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley to the ISS for a historic two-month stay. Crew-11 is led by NASA astronaut Zena Cardman on her first space flight. Her crewmates include NASA's Mike Fink, serving as pilot on his fourth mission, Kimiya Yui of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency on his second flight, and Oleg Platonov of Roscosmos, also flying for the first time. Yui and Platonov are mission specialists. The Crew-11 astronauts are joining seven current ISS occupants, JAXA's Takuya Onishi, commander of Expedition 73, NASA astronauts Anne McLean, Nicole Ayers, and Johnny Kim, and Russian cosmonauts Kirill Peskov, Sergei Rizikov, and Alexei Zubritsky. But honestly, we don't know how many more trips like this can happen. The International Space Station ISS has been a symbol of international cooperation for decades, hosting astronauts from NASA, Roscosmos, ESA, JAXA, CSA, and more. However, its end is drawing near. That's not exactly surprising. The ISS has far outlived its original lifespan. Think of it like an old car. When you bought it back in 1999, it was state of the art. It's served reliably and it's still safe, but over time it's gotten harder and more expensive to maintain. Spare parts are becoming scarce and the upkeep is a growing challenge. The U.S. alone, through NASA, spends around $3 billion annually to keep the station running. Continuous operation in low Earth orbit is no small feat. It requires a steady supply chain, constant maintenance, and the ability to respond to unexpected issues in one of the harshest environments imaginable. NASA and its international partners have agreed to extend the ISS program until at least 2030, this extension ensures continued scientific research for a few more years, but that's about it. By then, the ISS is expected to retire. So does that mean China's Tiangong space station will be the only one left in orbit? Not quite. The 2030 extension also serves as a transition period. NASA is actively supporting the development of privately owned space stations. Companies like Axiom Space and Blue Origin are already working on building the next generation of space stations, with initial modules expected to launch within the next few years. NASA is providing hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, along with technical support, to help bring these plans to life. Eventually, NASA will select one company to become its official partner, taking over the role the ISS currently plays. This shift is designed to free up NASA's resources and allow the agency to focus on more ambitious goals, like deep space exploration, which presents far greater challenges. That said, companies that successfully build their own stations 
get federal approval, and launch into orbit will be able to pursue their own missions, including ventures into deep space, even without NASA's direct involvement. While these future stations will share a lot of technological heritage with the ISS, they won't be identical. We've been evolving space station technology since the ISS was first assembled, and much of that experience will inform the design of these new platforms. But we can also expect improvements, more efficient layouts, right-sized modules, and infrastructure tailored to the research needs of NASA and its partners in low Earth orbit. Of course, one of the most important factors in designing a space station is to build it to serve the people working there. On the ISS, that means supporting scientists conducting research that can only be done in microgravity. For example, space-based medical studies are especially valuable because cells age faster and certain conditions, like heart disease or cancer, progress more rapidly in space. This allows researchers to observe biological processes that would take much longer to study on Earth. Another major focus is understanding how the human body reacts to long-term exposure to microgravity. This research is vital for developing countermeasures that will enable astronauts to stay in space for longer periods, a key requirement for future missions to Mars. Future space stations will feature upgraded, more modern research facilities. They'll also likely offer cleaner, more streamlined work environments. If you've ever seen photos of the ISS, you might wonder, how can anyone work in there with cables running everywhere and equipment attached in every direction? It can look chaotic. But there's a reason for that. The ISS wasn't originally designed to accommodate many of the systems and experiments it hosts today. Thanks to advancements in technology, newer stations will benefit from more compact electronics and better interior design. This should result in cleaner, more organized workspaces. And beyond functionality, aesthetics and comfort are improving too. The ISS has a small cupola, a dome-like window where astronauts can stick their heads and shoulders through to get a 360-degree view of Earth and space. It's one of the most beloved spots on the station. But Axiom Space's upcoming space station promises to take that experience to the next level. They're designing a much larger cupola, so big that astronauts will be able to float their entire bodies inside it, offering a breathtaking, immersive view that feels like flying in space. Assembling the ISS took many years and dozens of space shuttle flights, with modules launched and added one by one. But this time around, we have vehicles like SpaceX's Starship, which could potentially launch an entire small space station in a single mission. Humanity's journey in space is still in its early evening, not the end, but just the beginning of what's to come.